Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Um, so I, I have this, this project uh, evolved out of necessity. And so growing up, my, my grandparents' generation would tell me about the 30s and their experiences. And I'm aware, at least in my area, the, um, the grasshoppers ran out of food. And that's when they left in the 30s. Um, and so in 2020, I had a drought in my area. Uh, we began the spring with a very high water table. Ah, no one's going to do that. Okay. Stripper. Whoops. Okay, we got to... I'll, I'll fix this later. Anyway, um, and, but 2020 was dry, uh, and so I just had you know, issues with drought. But in 2021, um, the grasshoppers came on pretty quickly. And um, it, I was lucky in my neighborhood. I had nine inches of rain between June and middle of July, unlike a lot of other people. But that was on top of a 10-inch deficit. Uh, but the grasshoppers were prolific and in everything. And so what I noted that year is I had a uh, specialty seed crop after specialty seed crop plus alfalfa just get annihilated. Um, I grew beets for seed as well. And I probably had probably 1,200 row feet of them. And uh, then they're going after the roots, but they wouldn't eat the leaves. I didn't know why. And uh, it's like, no matter what, I, I was trying to figure out what can I do. Um, so all I could do is watch them just eat everything. That pretty much, they, they left squash alone, except for the zucchini family, which is uh, a squash has three families. That's C. Pepo. They peeled them, most of them. But the others, they seem to just back off. They didn't touch the vines. They didn't touch the fruit. So it's like, well, I got that crop. Um, and that was the first year in my life and my mom's life that we never had carrots because they just mowed them off. So uh, I got a USDA grant, which they, let me do fix this. It's hiding here. There we go. Duplicate. I have to go back one, one screen here. Technical problem. Sorry about that. Okay. Duplicate. I'll go back. It's in presentation mode. Uh, let me fix this here. I'm trying to figure out why it's. Nope. What do we got going on here? It's not what I wanted here. Okay, I'm just gonna kill that. Try it again here. There we go. All right. Um, this project was funded by a SARE grant. Granted, if I wouldn't have got the SARE grant, I would have went through it anyway. And I have to note that in 2021, drought year, I had problems. 2022 in my area was a normal year precipitation-wise, but I had just as much pressure from the grasshoppers. Um, in 2022, though, I did pick up the refractometer, which is a tool you use for measuring bricks, which is your, your sugar level in plants. And uh, NDSU had a research study at my place, and the hoppers were in it, but they wouldn't eat it. They're dancing around, didn't touch the leaves, didn't touch the grain. Uh, renters' soybeans, not that far away. They were having a heyday. Bricks there was 10%, my wheat was 15%. It's like there, there was something going on. So I applied for a SARE grant, project number FNC 23-1389. That is public. If you go to USDA SARE, uh, all projects are on there so you can read about it. My report's due at the end of the month, and so it's not up there yet, but it, uh, USDA has to press their magic little button to, to make it public. So, uh, so this was out of necessity, and it's like, well, I, I want something good to come out of a bad situation, because uh, I realized that now I just went through what my grandparents went through and just watched everything disappear on me. Uh, so the purpose of the study was to address insect pressure. Grasshoppers were my arch nemesis, but there's other bugs that are, there we go. Other bugs that are problematic. Uh, you know, aphids like cabbage, just you know, name a few. Um, bricks is, it has a relationship with flavor. The higher the bricks, often the better the flavor you got with your, what you're growing, and soil health. And so with this study, I'm addressing soil health to influence the bricks levels in a variety of crops. And all the crops I had chosen for this study were the ones the grasshoppers took out for me. 
and just say, I know this, this doesn't show up the best. This is 2021, I don't know, 2022, I'm sorry. This is onions, that's their bloom and what's not showing up here. We have all these stems at the ground, that's what they ate off. And so with my onions, I had two different lots, the ones to eat, which are planted from you know, fingerlings. Those are mowed off within a week of planting. But these for seed, where you put the bulb back on the ground, they waited until they bloomed and then they went after them. And I got one by one by one, uh, nothing I could do. It's like, that they left. Um, that's lettuce, which is here, here, and here. They left me the stems, that's all they left me. Mowed that off. Uh, I'm holding a stem, that is, that was what was left of a bean. That's what they left me there. And then that is, uh, that is facilia. That's what they left me there. So they, they with the flowers that I had, they, pre they, they let them get to almost blooming and then they start mowing and just left me sticks. Uh, the same with the alfalfa, that was my, my experience. And it was only mine, but my neighbors as well. Uh, one of my neighbors, he was gro growing really frustrated. So he, uh, and he's conventional, but he told me I'm spraying, he's spraying a variety of crops every three days for hoppers. And I was wondering, well, how does that pencil out? Um, at some point, it's like, you're, you're, it's a zero sum game. Uh, so crops tested, multiple ones. Uh, I want to do oats, alfalfa, flowers, vegetables, the ones that they wiped out on me. Uh, anything they like to eat, I do note that they didn't eat any trees. I wish they'd eat the caraganas, but I, I didn't get my wish. So. Uh, so basically I picked whatever the grasshoppers impacted in crop years 2021 and 2022. Uh, granted the squash, I had them there, and they, other than the zucchini one, they left most of them alone. So the goals, I wanted to achieve a BRICS level of 12%. And so in research I was looking at, they noted that insect pressure drops or stops at 12% BRICS. And uh, that's one goal. So that's what I was trying to achieve. I wanted to improve soil health uh, and then ultimately pre uh, prevent the grasshopper damage and or other insect. Uh, there is a chart, I guess when I get through this, I, there's a chart with a variety of vegetables they slap row crops all into one. I wish they wouldn't do that, but they have poor average best and um, you know, then the average for BRICS levels for variety of crops and they're all over the board. So for example, onions and lettuce are lower. Uh, potatoes are lower. I was kind of surprised at that. Um, but some, their, their average is actually crowding 12. You know, the challenge with the drought year, everything is stressed. It is, we can't get around that. Um, but what really bugged me is that 2022 was a normal year and I still have these pesky little devils bugging me. Questions so far? Yes. What was the test that you used to, <clears throat> to check this? Did you like mail this in or send in like a... I got a refractometer and the, the pliers, uh, kind of a homemade deal. It's got a bow in it and you can put your plant matter in it and squeeze the sap out of it onto the refractometer that hold up to your eye and then then you can see the, the chart in there. So basically it, it raises up to, I think it goes up to 20 some percent and then you can see what your BRICS level is. What does that cost? I think I paid about, well for the, the tool and refractometer together 85 bucks. Yes? Did you test different parts of the plant, like the flower, the stem, the leaves? So what I do is um, the, what the squash, I tested the fruit itself. Um, the corn, I tested the leaves. And uh, lettuce was the leaves. Uh, most were leaves. The safflower was a little bit tricky. Um, if you ever raise safflower, it's like working with needles. I, I tried to get a bunch of, uh, trying to get the head in there to squeeze juice out of, that was kind of tricky, but I, I, I got a little bit of the head and the, the, the leaves in that one because it was just difficult. Yes? Uh, or between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Yep. So you're supposed to test not early in the morning, not late in the evening, but more midday is when you're supposed to test that. That's the ideal time. So I forgot, I forgot to put that on there, that testing that is important. Um, other questions? No, oh, maybe. Uh, so the treatments. Uh, now, granted, I'm certified organic, so I had to have OMRI listed um, products for doing this. 
And so I had a potassium in granular form uh, to increase the potassium to nitrogen level based on soil tests, humic acid, amino acid, uh, iron, calcium in powder form, and then the iron, which I'm, well, I'll address it now. So after submitting all my, my um, amendments to the certifier, about the time I need to apply, they get back to me. It's like, oh, by the way, you can't apply uh, iron um, unless your soil test says so. And it's like, well, my soil tests are a little bit over, over the board. And so they said if it hits average, it's a no-go. They're treating it as a controlled substance. So I wasn't able to incorporate that. And one soil scientist said, like, well, there's certain other minerals that can affect iron um, that where you could justify that, but the certifier said no, so I had to leave iron out of my, out of, out of my uh, study here, much to my dismay. And then I got some calcium in powder form. And so um, besides the potassium, the others, I, I would mix in a handheld sprayer according to the manufacturer's recommendations. So that was apl applied as a foliar spray uh, and to the ground around the crop. Uh, so the, the oats, though, I, was, I, I have a four-wheeler uh, uh, sprayer mount on the four-wheeler. I was able to apply some on there because it was a bigger unit where everything else was by hand. And so methodology, I did soil tests. was first thing, spring. Um, I applied, applied the treatments. Um, then I measured bricks with the refractometer. And uh, of course, I always follow manufacturer's recommendations. And so challenges I had, I mentioned the, the iron. Um, I, I went to Menards to get the flags. You get to mark everything. And I color coded every, all my treatments. Um, and your control variable is, is of course, the um, where, where you don't apply a treatment. Um, the, my flags got lost on the oats pretty quick. Uh, and we had a lot of rain. I was a 20 inch mark for the year. Uh, and my oats lodge. So uh, I'm lacking some data on the oats because like, well, the, these two on the end I could find and the rest I'm like, well, it's there somewhere. And the borage is the same way. Um, so uh, the, the borage and the tomato kind of swallowed up some flags unless something got in there. Uh, portion of my study for the one plot, I had a flooding issue. I mean, not a bad problem to have. So I had this whole swath in there, swath, where I, I um, I, I have no data because it's, it's, it drowned out um, not long after uh, emergence. Um, that hadn't happened for so many years and thought, oh, it ain't going to matter what I plant, but I wasn't expecting the amount of rain we were going to get in June. So I was glad to get that. Uh, my popcorn and hops crop failed. They were part of the study as well, but, but I just had a crop failure there. Um, and again, the flooded area was the issue. And so results, I have to switch to the spreadsheet. Um, which I got down here. There we go. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. I'm going to make it. Why is it so small? Hmm. Well, plan B. Let's blow it up further here. I believe in death by spreadsheets, so anyway. Um, where I have a blank cell, that's a flooding issue. Um, grab the borage. This is, I've grown borage just in small plots experimentally more than once, and this is the best looking crop I ever had. Um, and so what I can see is in most areas I have uh, an increase in bricks, the like black beans. Uh, the, be the beans were one of the first things I had hoppers annihilate for me. They, they were the first ones I lost. Um, borage, I noted, um, there, I only was at three and four or four and a half percent, but I'd found other data on that that's a low sugar, a low bricks crop. Uh, carrots was my most significant difference. No treatment, six and a half percent bricks. With the calcium, I had 13 percent. That's a substantial difference. Um, cilantro, my largest, was with the calcium there again, uh, but my no treatment area flooded out on me. Um, cucumbers were lower. 5% gourds, I was, I hit with humic acid and potassium, I hit the 12% mark. Where to go? Okay. Um, lettuce was low. Load, I put Lodi squash, that's a Machata squash, uh, great in flavor. And so the humic acid made the biggest difference there, both no treatment, 5%. So I got a big difference in there too. 
So I, so what I, I think is kind of interesting is like, well, what's going on with the carrots here? I get a reading like that there. And then with Lodi squash, um, the humic acid was made the difference. And maybe, you know, a possibility is it has more, it could be the variety or what the species. That's possible, but not, not for sure. Um, let's scroll down a little bit more here. I'm going to use onions I thought were, oh, there went again. Technology is not co cooperating with us today. Onions I had 3% higher than the no treatment uh, with the calcium. So I was pretty happy with that. And again, I, I'm, I was tickled pink. Uh, I haven't had onions since 2020 that I could eat. So I was pretty happy to get that the hoppers took me out before. Um, I put a few crops here in green because there was a substantial difference. Um, between the safflower, I hit the 12%, no treatment, nine and a half. Soybeans, I, I had rabbits come in as soon as they emerged. And granted, because I did really small plots, I think if I had a whole field, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, but they ate them off right away. But after I put all the treatments on, they left them alone. And they're still running through that area. Um, so anyway, uh, but I had 12% with the potassium. I was happy with that. Um, sweet corn, and I was testing in stocks there. No treatment seven. Um, see, blue is what again? I got to remember my, my color coding. Amino acid, I hit, I hit 11 and a half there. And tomatoes, 6% uh, no treatment. Highest is with potassium. And so what I could see is that treatments did make a difference. Yes. So how many times were you spraying? Once a week? Uh, so it'd be like about every two. Every two weeks? Uh, the, so, but the manufacturer's recommendations with the calcium was once in the growing season with the calcium, with that, with that type of calcium. Uh, and I know there's lots of different calcium products out there, but that was once. Yes? How do you apply it just on a foliar feed? Um, can you apply it like even before planting uh, in the soil? Or what's the fastest way to get a brick level? So the, the calcium, it, I, according to manufacturer's recommendations for each product, um, the potassium and the calcium I could do before planting. But with the amino and, uh, and humic acids, it recommended after planting and more than one time. And it was foliar. They said, well, if it gets, they, they mentioned a drench in the soil, you could do both. So I would do both at the same time. So are you considering redoing this again and hitting the plant, like one plant with all four sprays? I could do that. I plan on replicating this again. So I thought, well, I could mix all together and see what happens. Um, so just FYI with my soil tests, um, I have a higher organic matter level than most do. Um, so my, my highest in one field, let's see, was with 9.1, the lowest was 6.1. And that's usually unheard of. Um, granted, I've been certified organic since 20, 16, uh, the, one, the one field in particular I could say had, had always been organic until uh, a neighbor drifted, drifted in there but with spray, but yes. And, and maybe, maybe you'll cover this, but what can you do to the soil structure to have a good, healthy plant index, a, a bricks level in that plant even before So I guess it was, what I was aiming for was changing the soil, you know, the soil amendments here, which are foliar, foliar and drench. Uh, so I, you, according to the soil tests, you try and address deficiencies or if one is higher than the other. And so where I, I had a, you know, a debate with the certifier was with the iron, uh, my carbonate level, carbonate and iron have a unique relationship. And that's where one scientist was like, well, you, he, he felt he could justify it, but the certifier said no. Yes. Did you know, notice any physiological differences, like leaf area, stock diameter? That so that was weird. Is that I didn't see any difference that way. Um, you had a question too. Yeah, I was gonna, what's the cost of some of these products, especially the foliar applied? The uh, I can't remember. So I I'm granted. I'm trying to remember. What, you buy. I have way more than what I needed for each. I can look up. I, yeah, I did. I don't remember offhand what they were. Um, the cheapest was the potassium. That was the cheapest. Yeah, it was the the amino acid and the the humic acids were my most expensive products. 
So for the amino acid, did you use like a soybean hydroxylate or what did you use for it? It's, uh, no, that's, okay. The ingredients, that's OMRI listed. So I'm trying to remember what they derived it from. I can't remember offhand what they, if I go back and email, I can look up the product. But there, it wasn't, there wasn't soybean hydroxylate that it wasn't, no. Because everything I have is OMRI listed for, even my iron was, but then the certifier nixed it. So anyway. Yes. You did soil tests, but could it also work? Maybe even work better to test plant tissue. The, you mean for like high de, high nutrient the density? You mean? So you test your crops that are going for. Yeah. For each mineral, or you're talking because I, I tested bricks. Uh, it's an option. I mean, like if a lot of people do that for for nutrient density, um, I didn't write that into the grant, but that'd be an option. So all I was testing was the sugar, is what bricks was testing in the plant itself. So yeah, physiological, I didn't notice anything different, um, but sugar there was. It's like, if I get, let me go back to, I have other observations here. Um, that was done here. Let me see here from current slide. Let's see if it likes me. Okay. I guess I wish it'd show up. These are in the squash in the field. Um, and it's like there was, yeah, between one treatment to the other, no difference. Okay. Let's see if we go back here. That all looked consistent. It was, this, was, this was surrounded by rye. Um, that's the borage. This is the most vigorous borage I've ever had. Grown the same variety before too. Um, but compared, and this has been grown in that, that plot before. Uh, I call this my research garden. Um, there it goes again. And so that, but I do notice that the seed production was late on it. So was it the year? I don't know. Um, but I'd never had borage that vigorous before. It got to the point it just, it went flat because there's a lot of rain, but the, but the, the plants were heavy. Um, Which was that with? Was that with like the calcium or the? All the above. All of the above. All of the above. Other than where it flooded. There, that, there at zero, but. Yes? Just an observation. It looked like there was many more flooding out problems on the no treatment than yeah. Yep. Because I try and line things up, and it's just the way it came through, and then, oh, well, like yeah. Just placement of where they yep. Okay. Okay. I, I was just like, yep. Oh, so hence I have a. Nope. It's just like, <laughs> thank you, flood, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. If I remember back to your spreadsheet, it looked like there were not significant differences in the oats. Is that just because of the vigorousness of the crop, or what's your in the oats, uh, granted, I, because it, once it lodged, then I was having trouble finding the, the flags to test. And so, um, you're right, the crop was very vigorous, um, but it, I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, yes? And did you think about using uh, like organic sugar as a spray? I did try that in 2021 on my onions, and it didn't, it didn't make a difference. So that's what I wondered, it was like, okay, I sprayed the grasshopper sitting there with the sugar water and they would stay on. So sugar water didn't deter them, but the higher sugar in the plant itself does. Yes? Uh, you had a check for everything, right? A check strip? For yeah, the that's the no treatment area. Uh, how did that look compared to the other? You said you couldn't tell the difference between the different the, Could you tell between the check? The, the appearance? The, the appearance looked the same. That's what was unique. Uh, that, that's what's odd is that with all these treatments, they look the same. Um, and so I look at yield, uh, a noticeable difference though I could say would be with the tomatoes. There was some difference there with yield. But everything else uh, was, was about on par. So that's weird. So yeah, that, yes. Do you have data for either production or damage? You, you mean? Did you collect data on, on feeding on damage to the plants right. from the grasshoppers? Oh. Or count the number of grasshoppers? On each I didn't. Well, they. they mean, uh, I had entire crops just gone. They left me sticks from 2021 to 2022. So that's what you're, refer, that's what you're referring to, no, right? This trial. This trial. Oh, yeah. well, we'll get to here. We'll get to that. So I'm just going through. This is hollyhocks. They. That's from the drought year. They left me most of the seed at the top 
and left be the blooms. They left a little bit, but that they, they tend to eat there. Um, that's our day of our, our tour. Let me get to the other here. So other things that are notable, lettuce treated with amino acid, the flavor was significantly different for the better than any other treatment. So when I, I, uh, I found that really, it's like everyone I had come sample, they noticed that this is really, really different. So that, that's a notable observation. Um, I mentioned the rabbit damage before treatment, but after I did the treatment, they, they left them alone. Soybeans and black beans. Um, for this year, no grasshopper damage. They're around, but they didn't, they didn't damage anything, at least in this anyway. Even the non-treatment? Yeah, even the, that's the non-treatment they didn't there either, but they were still around. But we had a normal year too. Uh, there goes my, there we go. There were, uh, so Mother Nature will wipe out grasshoppers with significant rainfall when they hatch. Uh, in 2022, I did not achieve that at all. It, it was, they were, they were going for three weeks before I had significant rain and I had normal precipitation and, and everything else was normal. Uh, but 2023 was a little bit different that way. But they're around, but uh, when they're not stressed, bricks and everything else is better. And so you know, one of my takeaways was like, okay, when we're, when we're in a real dry year, we're up the creek without a paddle no matter what we do. It's dry, uh, plants are stressed, unless you're irrigating. But then year two is when the hoppers will make their appearance. And it's like, well, what can we do to address that before they come? Uh, because it, it's, history is gonna repeat itself. And I believe there's uh, uh, Native American folklore from years back and that is, um, when the locusts came, the grasshoppers, um, there was nothing they could do. They just had to wait for them to leave, you know, which is the weather changes or they run out of food and they move. Um, so I noted in, there was an article I read from the thirties and they said for North Dakota, Montana, in a lot of the areas where they were at, they just left because they ran out of food. But you know, poultry makes a difference. If you have a lot of poultry, they're going to eat them. Uh, it takes a lot of poultry to do that. Um, so they're still around, though I noticed towards fall, I, I didn't see as many. Um, the tomatoes were treated with the calcium treatment. You know, you should get the black rod on the end. Uh, there was none of that. And you know, and often I hear you should put it in the ground before you put the tomato in, which I didn't do. Um, that I had to note, note there. Um, the tomatoes treated with the calcium had a higher yield and the tomatoes with, it was, I believe the humic acid had a higher yield as well. They all tasted good, and great. I went with uh, heirloom varieties. I was happy with flavor, um, but the potassium treated humic acid and, and amino, there I'd have a little bit of black rot here and there, much to my dismay. Um, again, my borage is most the best borage crop I ever I've ever grown. Other questions? Yes. So, from based upon your personal experience, you know, how will you change your operation? Will you go? Will you spray like next year your production crop? So the, Greg, I do, I do specialty crop seed production. So that I probably am going to do in some areas there um, based on soil tests. Now with the lettuce, I'm going to treat very delicately because I'm probably going to have a seed contract for that. Uh, that is probably the one main treatment because it really enhanced the flavor. Um, when I was like ate the squash there, I didn't notice a big difference in flavor, but the squash I grow is grown for flavor. And there's some that just aren't flavor flavorful. That's just how they are. Yep. What kind of difference in flavor did you notice? Like, uh, was it sweeter or? The, the lettuce was sweeter. Yeah, I noticed. There, there was a noticeably different flavor. And I grow the, the, um, the, gra the variety I grow, I grow for flavor. So when MPS had the variety trials back, we're about 10 years ago and we had that, um, they had 10 varieties of romaine. The border row was a leaf lettuce called outrageous. And that's the one I like, that's my favorite lettuce. And so that's where I've noticed the big difference. When I was in the variety trial and I harvested the entire perimeter, I could never tell a difference. But with this amino acid treatment, something happened there. So it had a big impact on that. So, and Rich can vouch for this, you know, it's, it's for more study. So I plan on replicating next year. 
Um, granted, I don't wish for a drought again. I don't wish for grasshoppers again, but it's, it's inevitable it's gonna happen. Um, what I haven't tested though is like cabbage. So if you have canola nearby, the, the aphids make their, their appearance when you have cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. It's like, well, could this be a, a method to counteract that? That's another experiment I'd like to, to engage in. Um, so I'm very glad I did, yes? What would you recommend like just for the soil, soil uh, to take care of that, to create a higher race level, I mean, even before planting anything? It's like with a soil test, you can easily apply calcium and potassium uh, before you plant anything. Uh, the humic acid, fulvic acid, manufacturers recommend after it's growing is the recommendation. So I don't know, I didn't see data on when they apply it before. Um, they, they recommend it once it's up and growing, have at least a couple, a couple inches of growth. I think with the humic acid it was, if I remember, that was every three to four weeks. The amino was a little bit different time frame. Yep. I think I missed your introduction, but where are you located? And I'm, because of that, what's your inherent potassium level? So I can bring up a soil test. I, I'm north of Bismarck. My soil type is Williams Bowbells. Um, and I've heard, they, I've heard a, a one supposed expert say, well, that soil isn't known for great water filtration. Uh, I do. I have great water filtration, but I think that might be because of our, our farming methods. So in my fields, um, all of them, potassium was at least uh, above average. Now, what I was trying to do with this was address, address the ratio with the potassium versus nitro nitrogen is what I was trying to address. You have ample nitrogen. I do, yes. And when you get, when your organic matter is above 5%, NDSU has a calculator that basically says you decrease by so many pounds for every percentage above 5%. Um, so yeah, the, my low end is 6.1. Wow. And the mic. What was that again on the organic matter? I couldn't quite hear that. If, uh, if your organic matter is at above 5%, okay. it's on NDSU site, would they have a calculator for uh, calculating nitrogen based on your organic matter? So for every percentage over 5%, you can reduce the amount of nitrogen by so many pounds per acre. And they got the calculator on there. It's, that's an easy web search. Um, so like I, I'm fortunate that I'm, I don't have to worry about nitrogen very much. And we've incorporated animal manure through years. Um, and there's generally residue left in the field. And plus livestock generally have access at some point when the crops are off. So livestock have always been integrated in my operation. That's always, always been the case. Lots of hoof action. Um, I've had one biological test I've done on soil uh, to remember it. it. It basically was identifying what's there, but it, it, the test wasn't good at giving you a number. <coughs> I know there's others out there. Um, biology, you know, biology and, and is an important part of our soil structure. Um, so like what squash was, that's primarily no-till because I put down fabric. Uh, and where a lot of things are, it's more, I can say, minimum till. I'm, I'm tilling some, uh, but, but not, not hardcore, anything like that. Other questions? Yes? You know, these treatments were for plants that were already emerged. Have you had grasshopper issues with destroying fields at emergence? The, yeah, so. so would any, have you thought about how, I mean, how do you change your bricks on something? Good. That's a good question because like in 2021 and 22, um, the carrots and the onions, that was what, what I planted just in the ground. That was immediate. They were gone. Yeah. Um, I had the same thing in 2022 barley. It just wiped the whole field off at emergence. Yep. So in, my, in 2021, I had a rye field. Um, and they didn't bother it at emergence. Um, but when we got to July and then the heat came on and the rain stopped, well, then, then, then they started, uh, then they were putting pressure on that crop then. And ultimately, I, I cut it and bailed it um, because I felt it was going to be a failure anyway. So I was like, let's just cut it for, for straw and done with it. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, on small scale and you're using heavy use manure, so your soil is already really good. Yeah. Um, do you think there would be an even more substantial difference on, say, field crop production? You know, on large scale acres with these amendments? Would it be more draft? more of a drastic change. Because that's why I did the oats. Um, granted, I, 
because it lodged them like, oh, I can't, I can't find my, fla my, my flags. I, I would like to test some of them larger scale, uh, especially soybeans, since there's a lot of people raising soybeans in the neighborhood. Um, I was happy with the sweet corn, because um, that in prior years, they, they just, they left, they left me a stock is what they left me. My neighbors was worse with their conventional corn. But granted, they, they ate the organic corn first. Then they went. To, then they went to the conventional corn. But yeah. On those tall crops, we just had a flag. We, we'd use laths. I I realized I need to move the laths. I yeah. The top of the laths. Yep. So that's that's a researcher's mistake. If I could do it over, I would have just painted laths and put them in because uh, yeah. I, I so when things lodge, like I can't sample here because I'm not technically sure. I want to be sure that I applied the treatment in a spot where I'm sampling. So I'd, I'd rather have no data than bad data in that case. Um, my, my oats, it, it went flat pretty quick because the amount of rain it got. And we, what we, did, we bailed it, uh, but it looked good. I was happy with that. Um, so I mean, something that does bother me is like, okay, with the various treatments, I don't see a, 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 vis, a, a visual physiological appearance and difference. Um, but the flavor for a couple of them there, that was different. Or do I have a unique microenvironment? We can't rule that out either. Might, you know, that's, that's a possibility. Uh, a neighbor in my neighborhood, he's been growing peas for seed for 30 years. And, and he's told me, he says, I cannot tell you why I'll have a crop failure here and next to it, I don't. He says, I can't tell you, I, I don't get it. But that's been the case every year. Um, I mean, in drought, he gets it, but on a normal year, failure here, good crop there. There was no hail, but doesn't know why. Could be a microclimate, I'm not sure. Other questions? I, I highly, I, I wish I would have experimented sooner, sooner like in 2021, 2022. Um, I wasn't expecting the, the pressure in 2022. Um, granted, I, didn't, I wasn't alive in the 30s. My grandparents went through any, or everything. Um, but now I realize that, okay, on a good year, they're gonna be around. Um, and it's like, I can start preparing for that if it happens again. Yes? Any uh, room for more treatments or, or, or anything like that in your test for next year? I guess, you know, what I, 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 I'm gonna try what you mentioned, put all in one. Yep, kitchen sink. Yeah, I'll do the kitchen sink. We're gonna try that, see what happens. I guess it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt, um, like why not? Does, does anyone in the room have suggestions that they've found that work on their own farms, their own system? Does anyone, yeah, does anyone have, have suggestions for that help yeah. you deal with grass, with, with insect pressure? The only thing I've tried is I sprinkle diamantaceous earth on my plants and sometimes it seems like it does something. I've used it with potato bugs and with aphids. That I've, I've used it with that work. And I did try diatomaceous earth on I did it with the beans and the, uh, a f bunch of flowers. Um, it seems like they left it alone a day and then it was just, mm -hmm. then it was game on. It works very good on cabbage. Sprinkle it on the cabbage. Yep. It works very good on cabbage. I've been, that's what I've used. My mom would get aphids on her cabbage all the time and that's what I uh, like to use on that. It's for the, the moths. Yep. So that's what I'd like to add to my experience is cabbage, broccoli and cauliflower um, because they're prone to some some little bugs too. Give that a shot and see. Yeah, there should be one more here. Uh, see so yeah, my future plans. Um, I I guess I'd like to seek out another expert for soil um, because I had the, the discussion with carbonate versus iron um, and I, I didn't have clear a, a, a clear answer on that. Um, Why did your uh, certifier They, they say above average, so they said no, and then in uh, NOP it says that that nutrient is only if the soil test needs it. But then the one the one soil scientist said, well, your carbonates your carbonate to iron ratio is a little bit off. I think you can also um, request it based on instead of a nutrient need as mm -hmm. a pest control measure, and they might allow it through that. I could try that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this, and then I, I find out like the day before I'm going to apply is when they get all me like, oh, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, 
So it's like I, go, I have a two and a half gallon jug of, of this iron mix that, that I'm not using right now. Um, so other questions? Or anyone else have, have experiences that, that worked or didn't work? Okay. And they're liking the lush green stuff across the fence and leaving ours alone. But I don't know that. I haven't taken the time to study it. But I, I'm hesitant to claim anything because I don't want to look a gift horse to mouth. But it's, yeah. it's just noteworthy. I know my, my renter had, uh, uh, the land I rent out, he had wheat in 2022, and I know he applied an insecticide once. And then I would thought, well, I'm going to go test it. And, and he was at 14 and 15 percent bricks. And I noticed the hoppers were there and they weren't eating. And, and I mentioned to him, it's like, I think you're safe not to apply because your bricks levels are high, but your beans are in trouble. Um, that, that he had 10, 9 and 10 percent, and they were having the heyday. It's um, so like that, the, when I grew the black beans, that was the first ones they took out. Uh, yes? Really? Not a with any, at all, just sugar water. That's good to know with aphids, because that's something I could experiment with. But, but I tried it with the hoppers, and it just it didn't, it didn't do anything. Yeah, it, it didn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to ask, you had mentioned you tried spraying sugar water. I was yep. just curious, do you know what rate you use? Let's see. In a gallon of water, I think I put two cups of organic raw sugar, sugar cane, is what I used. So I made sure that, that the sugar was organic as well. Uh, and then shook it up really well. The organic sugar, it, it dissolves pretty good, um, but it, yeah. The hoppers mocked me, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I just asked because on our farm, we're spraying everything with sugar water, mm -hmm. and we've actually controlled actually our hoppers. With really? Them. Okay. And What's your rate? Because you, in our hay fields, we'll walk in, the first 20 feet, it'll be solid grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And then after that 20 feet, Really? And I don't know what we're doing. I don't know if it's the bricks. I mean, it could be a mixture of everything. What What do you use for sugar? Uh, it's an organic sugar that comes out of Brazil. Okay. Sugar cane then. Yeah, granular. Uh, roughly about two pounds an acre. Okay. I, I given putting two cups in a gallon of water, I think I probably. probably hit that. Yeah. But hmm, <laughs> curious. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Is I don't have any experience with it myself, but from other organic farmers I've talked to on broad acres, they're using like four pounds of sugar in furrow. And then they're coming back every couple of weeks and spraying two pounds with their solution over top. Okay. And, and out of the 10 guys that I've talked to that use it, every one of them says it is a preventative me measure. It is not, it is not a, a reactive measure. So yeah. if you already have grasshoppers, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you continually use it beforehand, then it works pretty good. Yeah. Sir. Okay, that's is that the biological for eliminating them, or? It, it's a it's an Omri approved product, but it's a, actually a natural fungi. Okay, made in Montana. What's that? Is it made in Montana? No, actually, it's made in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, okay, right. People that have been having more success with it obviously are out here in Montana. Okay. Okay. Are they spraying it on or is that granular? Uh, it's actually, uh, so from the alfalfa side, they've done a couple different things. It's a new planting because it's more of a seed treatment. But, okay. Um, they've also been spraying it every full year, coming back after the first cutting, then you get uh, you know, your first little bit of foliage from the growth back, and then going out and spraying the foliage mm -hmm. at that time. 
Okay. I'll visit. You're, you have a booth, right? What's that? You have a booth, right? I do have a booth. Okay. I, I'll be hitting you up. So it's like, I, I like to experiment with something every year, uh, whether grant funded or not. And so, so this, this is the year I did more experiments than other years, but, but I thought I got to try something new and, and Rich can attest to this. Lots of experiments they, we, we fall on our face with, but if you don't, if you don't try, you're not going to know. Uh, yes. I've also heard of cayenne pepper powder being used. Okay. Don't try it myself. I, I haven't tried that either. I've not tried that, but. Rabbits too. Rabbits here. The, oh, okay. Bullets work too. I didn't say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> a good dog, yeah. I had one dog, she stayed all night and bark. Didn't have a deer or rabbit in place. And once she died, and like, they just moved right in. But um, yeah. Other questions or comments? There's funding out there. I know the cycle for SARE, well, the, is passed, but it comes up again. It's usually due in November or December. I know they got a booth here. Um, I, I highly suggest going after it. It's, it's nice to have some financial backing to try an experiment. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful for this because I've been, yeah, I guess, for many years, I'd always experiment with something, but it was often my first experiment with quinoa, that shoe box of seed was 900 bucks. Um, that it was my, and that, that crop failed too. <laughs> anyway, the next year it didn't, but, um, but you got to try something new all the time. When you suffered the damage in dry years, yep. was it? Worse, better, or the same than the surrounding agriculture? Uh, let's see. My, if I looked at the beans I had, even with a small plot compared neighbors, uh, I think we were on equal par there. But no one else had the specialty crops that I did. However, I could look around and see, yeah, that corn's pretty bad. Uh, beans were popular with the hoppers. Um, I didn't pay attention to wheat in the neighborhood. But but corn the corn and beans definitely got it. Alfalfa got damaged too, that it did. So yeah, it was comparable. Um, I'd also noticed pockets. So my one neighbor, everyone had them. But I had one neighbor who had it worse than others. I knew that because I have cattle down there and I could see it. Uh, but I'd, and he's conventional. But I don't have an answer. Is like well, did they just move in there? And decide this is home for a while. I don't know, but I, I know in 2021, there were some areas north of me, they didn't have them, but it was dry. I'm aware, my, my one neighbor, where he bought his insecticide, that, that dealer had said um, he had never had more requests for insecticide than that year. You know, 2022 was the year he had most requests. Um, and I heard across the river it was way worse than my area. So I, I'm guessing it was like in the 30s, um, Dad says that his dad said that, well, when they moved, it blocked out the sun. That's how heavy they were. And I know they, they rigged up a, um, a wheel-driven spreader for strychnine at the time, because that's how they would deal with them. But they, they could as well did nothing. It didn't matter anyway. Just, it hasn't been as bad in our immediate area, but a little further east, they were eating fence posts. Yeah. They eat the paint off of buildings. Yep, they do. Exactly. Yep. Eastern Montana was way worse than what, than what I went through by far. Cause it, and there, at least the, the friends I have, didn't matter, organic or not. Yeah. They're eating everything. But yep. Around us, they seem to not like our spindly crops and things. Hmm. <laughs> the wheat across the road. Yeah. But again, they, at least in my area, they ate the organic stuff first. Then they went on to the native. <laughs> <laughs> they ate the good stuff first, and then I tried chickens, and they pecked. They would peck the tomatoes. Just <coughs> yeah, Pol poultry are wonderful, but yeah, they, they might eat a little too much. But yeah, they wouldn't eat the tomatoes; they just would ruin each one. Okay. Turkey peas. Wild turkey peas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides checking the break, did you do any sap testing? Maybe I might have missed that part. The I just I just did the bricks. Did yeah. The bricks. Yeah. Yep. And midday, of course. But so I, um, when I had my field tour, 
I everyone got to eat the lettuce, and I tried to get the lettuce from that one spot because it, it noticeably tastes better. But I did ask my participants, taste that, then taste that. Um, and it's like that was a good observation because if, if that's your business and this amendment makes that big of a difference, it's worth, it's worth your while. Because um, then it made me wonder, it's like, well, okay, there's these other treatments. Why is the flavor consistent there and, and not this one? That's another research study. Yes? Did you check the grain? I thought, like on the sweet corn, did you check the grain? Or I, I just used the, the stock is what I went after. Um, yeah, when, when the hoppers got it, though, they went after stock and the grain. Grain first, and then, then they were after the stock. Uh, my cucumbers, squash, and carrots, there was more of the, the, the what you're eating there. I was checking. I didn't want to sacrifice my, my sweet corn cobs <laughs> right away. Because <laughs> I had had a since 2020, so I was like, I, yeah, anyway. Any last questions? I think, I think it's been great just hearing other people's experiences too and thinking of ideas that you could add if, if you repeat this again. Yeah, and I do want to, you know, I got all the stuff, I got plenty of the amendments, so I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, I'm just going to add broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage to it uh, this time around. I'm going to see if I can uh, convince my, my what I rent out um, for one of the, the, the amino and the humic acid. I'm going to see if my renter will be willing to just go spray an acre uh, uh, just because. Just because uh, he's got the equipment to do it to see what will happen. Mm -hmm.